Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakat. And we at the DB Islamic Association would like to welcome you to Ramadan Reminders. This year, we will be explaining Chapter 12 of the Holy Quran, the Tafsir of Surah Yusuf. This is Part 25, and as such, we are in the last 10 days of Ramadan, the days of emancipation from the hellfire. So we shall now recite the dua for those days. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma ajuni minan nar. O Allah, save me from the fire of hell. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Falamma anja al Bashir. So when the bearer of glad tidings arrived. Back to Canaan, where their father was. Remember Yusuf Islam yesterday? We ended where he sent his shirt back with his brothers to do what? Al-Kohu ala wajihihi. To put it over his face. Remember his father, Yaqub had become, become blind with grief. So he sent this. So the bearer of glad tidings, the same one who in Ayah 19, many decades ago, had brought the bloody shirt of Yusuf to his father to claim that he had died. He is now trying to uh, make recompense by saying, since I am the one who caused the harm, I am now going to bring the shirt back. And what happened when he put this shirt over his father's face? Then his sight returned. Kola. So he, the father, Yaqub is now saying, Alam akulakum. Didn't you, didn't I say to you? Inni a'lamu min Allahi ma la ta'lamun. Certainly I know from Allah what you know not. So this is proof here when I told you do not give up hope in Allah. Kolu. So they, the brothers, now reply. Ya Aba nastaghfir lana dhunubana. O oh, our Father, ask forgiveness for our sins for us. It must have been a really difficult thing for the brothers to admit that they were wrong to their father, to admit that they set up the whole story with Yusuf salam, and that they allowed the father to believe that he was dead for so many decades, to take away his son from him. Inna kunna qati'een And indeed we have been sinners. Kola So the father Yaqub is now replying to his sons and he says Sawfa astaghfiru lakum rabbi Soon Not right now But soon I will ask forgiveness for you from my lord. And the Tafsir speaks about the fact that he postponed it for a certain point in time. And there's a hadith by, reported by Prophet Muhammad wasalam, stating, When it is the last third of the night, our Lord, the Blessed, the Superior, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, descends every night to the lowest heaven and says, is there anyone who invokes me that I may respond to his invocation? Is there anyone who asks me for something that I may give it to him? Is there anyone who asks my forgiveness that I may forgive him? So, it seems that the father was postponing his dua until the time of Tahajjud. And during when he finished the Hajjid and made his dua, this was when he asked his Lord for forgiveness for his sons. For certainly 
He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is of forgiving, most merciful. So we ended the section upon which the brothers were reunited and we now begin the new section about the dream being fulfilled. And the ayah 99 says, فَلَمَّا دَخَلُوا عَلَىٰ Yusuf." So when they entered upon Yusuf, the word دَخَلُوا here means they came to him. And it speaks about that Yusuf salam took his army or the cavalry and they went out and greeted his family members. Not just his parents, but his brothers and all their descendants, maybe about 150 of them or so. And they had a great celebration, welcoming them into the city. And then he took his parents to himself, one side, Wakola. And Yusuf salam told them, Udkulu Misra Insha Allah. So enter into Egypt in the name of Allah. Insha'Allah here means in the name of Allah rather than the normal meaning of if Allah wills for this particular situation. And then Yusuf made a promise to them where he says, Aminin. He being the chief minister, the minister of finance, the minister of agriculture, promises that they will be here in safety and they were safe. However, their descendants, approximately 500 years later, they were not safe. And that was the time of Musa salam, and they turning over a new leaf and having a new beginning. وَرَفَعَا أَبَوَيْهِ عَلَى الْأَرْشِ وَكَرُّوا لَهُ سُجَّدًا And he raised his parents upon the throne and they fell down and prostrated to him. Now, what's the viewpoint of Islam today? Because at that point in time, it was allowed to prostrate to other human beings. So there was a Sahaba who came back from Syria and he entered the masjid. And the first thing he did was prostrate in front of the Prophet, to the Prophet. The Prophet became shocked and amazed and said, Ya Mu'adh, who told you to do this? Where did you get this from? Mu'adh ibn Jabal said, I just came back from Syria, the Roman Empire. And I saw that the Romans would prostrate to their priests and leaders. So I felt that you have more right to be respected than they did. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Do not ever do this again. So, it is not allowed for any human being to prostrate or to lower his head in front of another human being. Putting the parents up on the throne was a way of showing them great respect. But many scholars say that by this point in time, his mother had passed away. And it was his Kala, his mother's sister, who has the same rank as his mother, who had accompanied Yaqub and the two are considered to be his parents. And Wakola, Yusuf reminds his father. Ya Abati, oh my dearest father. Hada ta'wilu ya ya min qabl. This is the interpretation of my dream that I had a long time ago when I was a small boy. And now I am an old man I'm in such an elevated position. In this surah, the dream was reported in ayah 4. And it has now been fulfilled in Ayah 100. And he reminds them after, Khud ja'alaha rabbi haqqo. Certainly my Lord has made it true. And he says, Wa khud, and certainly ahsana bi idh akhrajani min as My Lord has been good to me and he took me out of the prison. 
as he reminds them of one of the favors that Allah has given him. And Yusuf alayhi salam reminds them of Allah's favors upon them when he says, وَجَاءَ بِكُمْ مِنَ الْبَدْوِي مِنْ بَعْدِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had brought them out from that Bedouin life, from living in the barren desert in Canaan to the highest court in Misra, in Egypt. And he continues where he reminds them, أَنَّزَقَ الشَّيْتُونُ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ إِخْوَتِي and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had granted them the favor of bringing them, them back together after shaitan had created discord between him and his brothers. Notice that he did not mention the well incident because he did not want to embarrass them. He just mentioned that it was shaitan's fault. Inna rabbi latifullima yasha'u Inna certainly my Lord is Latif. Latif is different from the characteristic of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being Al-Khabir, who is aware of all things. Latif would mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of even the most hidden details, just as the brothers hid those details so many years ago. And Allah is the most subtle, meaning that over it took many years that this plan was falling into place and Allah knew the perfect design of this plan and caused it to happen as he willed. <inaudible> Certainly Allah SWT is Alim, the all-knowing, the Hakim, the wise. As we look at the symmetry of this surah, this is part of the linguistic miracle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us, where we see in the second section where Yusuf salam had the dream that it has now been answered in the second to last section. And in the third section where the brothers plot and separation was taking place, in the third to last section was the brothers reunion. Now we're coming to the end of part 25 and tomorrow inshallah we'll be reading ayahs 101 to 105. We now end with the dua. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka amta sami'u alim. Our Lord, accept this service from us for indeed you are all hearing, all knowing. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.